Hey everyone, Benny here, and welcome to building a Minecraft calculator with redstone. So in this video, well, what we're going to do is we're going to start building a calculator. So let's start simple. What on earth is a calculator? A calculator is a device which does math automatically. That's all a calculator is. It's all it does. It's its sole purpose of existence is to do math automatically so that you don't have to do it by yourself on paper with in your head or any other way it automates the process and that's all a calculator is it's all it does it doesn't do anything fancy well unless you get a really fancy calculator but we're just talking about simple calculator like a simple pocket calculator doesn't do anything really fancy doesn't have memory management you can't program it it's not a computer it's just a calculator it just does math so, that's what a calculator is. So, where on earth do we begin? Well, if you pick up any handheld calculator, simple handheld calculator at least, the very first thing you see is you see this big giant dial pad right in your face with this huge series of numbers just ready for you to start putting in. So, that's a pretty good place to start building them. It's to start setting up a panel for numbers. So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to move over arbitrary amount. That's probably way too much. I'm just oversizing this for a sense of security. Now, I'm going to do a calculated process of numbers from 0 to 15. So I'm, that's a total of 16 numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we move up to 1, 2, 3, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm doing this slightly different from real calculators. I'm just going to have one button, one number, because we have a small enough range of numbers to do that. That way you won't have to do any weird number parsing, where if you want ten, you have to actually put in two numbers. No, you can do everything with just one button. I think that'd be something nice for a user. So, just go ahead and label all the numbers. And... Okay, almost done. 11, 12. And here we go. So there we go. We now have a calculator that processes numbers from 0 to 15. So that leaves us with a tiny bit of a, not necessarily a problem, but Maybe a bit of a question. What on earth do we do from here? <coughs> well, most electronic devices work in binary, or in other words, base 2. So let's start simple. What on earth is a base? A base is a mathematical term. It describes the, it describes the first number at which you no longer have a single digit. So for example, in our numbering system, we're in base 10, because 10 is the first number in our system that's two digits. Nine, we can't be in base 9, because that's still one digit, but 10 is the first number that's two digits, so it's base 10. Base 2 means that 2 is the first number that is two, excuse me, two digits. So we would only have zeros and ones, because those are the only single digit numbers that we have in a base 2 system. That's basically what binary is. So. The reason most electronic devices work in binary is because it's they have simpler mathematical patterns than base 10 numbers. You can do some processing in base 10 if you really want to, but it's just easier to do in base 2. So that's why we're doing it in base 2. So first things first, we got to convert all of our user inputs into base 2. And the way we do that might actually, no, I should just do levers for now. We can change back to buttons if we want later. I'll just do levers. Okay, almost done. So that's what I we're just going to build a base 10 to base 2 decoder. Now the very f now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the uh, sort of what what I call the ROM method because basically I'm just going to build a quick example right here. I'm going to have a wire set up like this. There's going to be torches on this wire and there's going to be a torch powering this thing too. And the torch is going to be like this. 
and this is going to be the get number. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have torches above the wires that I want to power. So basically the way this works is this these torches, hang on, they mirror the power the lever is giving. So when the lever gives power, these torches just give us a nice convenient way of transferring the power of the lever to multiple wires if we want to. We transfer it to one wire, we could transfer it to another wire, we could transfer it to no wires. But the whole point of this system is it's just a nice convenient way of transferring power to multiple wires. And the reason we would want to do this is because if what we can, since we have essentially one wire per number, that's what we're going to have anyways, we can just place torches above the e on states of every e number in that binary system. So that and that will automatically give us whatever binary number it represents. And so that's just a neat little redstone trick. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. So the very first thing you notice in that system is we have to go add torches. So I'm going to make sure that's behind it properly, and it is. So I think I went too far. Yeah, I did. I went. Hey, that doesn't have a lever. That's odd. But oh well. Now add torches to all of them. And now I'm going to add a control wire for every single one. The way I'm going to do this is going to be a little bit um, on the odd side, I guess you could say, but just bear with me. First off, I'm going to go over like this and just clear out a big ground area. So, there. And now I'm going to add those control wires, and these are going to be where we can um, put the... This is easier. we're going to be where we can put the torches that will represent the numbers that we're supposed to be giving. So, hold on a second. So, the, this is going to be the basic setup for it. So, we've got the basis for them. So, I don't think I could place wires directly there, so I'm just going to place them here. And these are going to be the wires that carry the binary number. Off is going to be 0, on is going to be 1. And that's going to be our numbering system. And we are going to end up converting this back to base 10, probably, anyways. So hopefully that won't be too hard. I'm going to go out one more, and you'll see why in a little bit. So we just need to have these wires go over every single one of the binary wires. And, yeah. So nothing too complicated here. We're just essentially building a base 10 to binary converter. And there we go. Oop. Okay, so now we need to put it... Oh, we need to extend these out one more, actually. Not place a torch. That's not going to help us. Now we're going to need to label it based on the binary numbers. Now, I know binary well enough to know that this is what the equivalent numbers are in base er, in binary from base 10. If you want to know why that is, I have a video in my Building a Minecraft Computer Tutorial series on video 3, which goes over how binary works in relation to base 10. So from now on, I'm just going to assume that you know binary to a moderate extent. So if you want to know about binary, just look at that video. It tells you all about it. So yeah. Anyways, now let's go like this. Oh yeah. I should explain what I'm doing right now. We do have a two-story input system. So that means we're going to have two sets of binary wires. And that will cause us a small issue, and we're going to address that in just a moment, but all this is doing right now is it's giving us, well, it's giving us a system of, of convenience, because now we don't have to have 15 numbers going all the way across. So we can make it smaller by having two stories, I mean, that's that's what I'm going for here. I, I'm sorry, I'm a tad bit on the tired side right now, so if I have sort of 
thought lapses like that, that's that's where that's coming from. So yeah. Almost done. And here we don't just randomly place redstone all over the place. <laughs> here we go. We have gotten all the wires and now we can do the binary. Or the binary conversion, I should say. I, again, I'm sorry, I'm a bit tired, so thought lapses probably are going to occur at least a couple times. So, if, excuse me for a second, there we go. Now, this, the way this works is ev it's basically the same as above, except, a uh, below, excuse me, but uh, this wire, this wire has all the torches now. All torches on the second story. I, and, again, I'm having thought lapses, I'm tired, I'm very sorry. So, this is what it is in binary, and there we go. So now we've got everything set up to convert to binary. But again, it's going to cause us a slight problem when these things are in two different places at once. First thing I'm going to do is repeatify it. So this way, I know when it ends, and if I timed it right, and I did, they should end direct right after here. So what I can do now, say it's repeaters at the end of all these, and by the way, this is not the most efficient system of doing this at all. If I was doing this in, well, if I was doing this in a different setting, I probably would do it in a more efficient way, but this is just going to be easier for the way we have it set up, and so that's the main reason that I'm doing it like this. So all this is doing is it's taking the redstone power, and it's combining them together so into one wire. So that way, if any of that way, we can have a two-story system that converges onto a single binary line. And that's the whole purpose of doing that. So now we only have one binary line to deal with. We don't have to check the binary line twice, see if they put it on the bottom or on the top. We have it all converged onto one line. We can just process that one line. And that's going to be basically the user input panel. So, thank you. See you in the next video.